Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Season 1, Episode 3 of Cooking in Conversation with Home Chef Nick. I have some guests with me today, some beautiful, gorgeous, sexy, fine, phenomenal young ladies. If you're at home, please join us in having a toast as we are toasting Season 1, Episode 3 of Cooking in Conversation. So, we hope to have a very good show, and for those of you at home, please join along as we have a lot of things we're going to cook today. One of those being which stuffed pork loin, a lot of goodness. So I'm gonna say it again, a lot of goodness. <laughs> All right, so let's have a toast. Yes. Good food. Good food. Good food. Good food. <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> All right, so we're getting started. First thing we're gonna do is we have a pork loin. Here's the pork loin right here. So. For those at home, here's the pork loin. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it, I'm gonna slit it in half, and I'm gonna pound the crap out of it. For those of you who need oil, you buy some pound of shit out of it. Oh, I'm sorry, crap. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Pretty much, yeah. Take your knife and we're gonna slice through the middle. What kind of knife is that? Hmm? The knife, type of knife? Oh, stand a bunch of knife. Okay. You know, making sure it's sharp. <laughs> okay, so that's how it looks right there. Next, we put some saran wrap on it. Ooh, you just hate saran wrap. All right, so we're going to cover the saran wrap over top of the pork loin, like so. We're going to put two coverings on it because when I beat it, it's going to expand. The reason why we're going to beat it to death is because we need it to um, be able to have all of the goodness in it, which is the filling we're going to put inside it. So we're just going to start. Pretend you got anger issues. <laughs> you know, somebody just messed you off, so that coworker at work, that boyfriend, that girlfriend, you know, just, just whatever. Take it out. <laughs> Anybody else want to try? Yeah. <laughs> hey, this is good for aggression, right? Yeah, that's some aggression. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What do you think it's therapeutic? Huh? Uh, tenderizer. Tenderizer. So one side is, you know, that way. Other side is this way. <laughs> you know, so you really, so really want to get somebody in the kitchen, right? Oh. That side. Yeah, what side would you just use it? The flat side? The flat side. Okay. Not that I have any issues. Do you take that on the plane or? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, probably found it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, make our filling. So we're going to saute everything. So let's put everything in the pan. Nice, healthy coating. So we're going to put in our mushrooms and our onions next. Be generous with it. Next up, the red onions. I would use red onions because I want it to be healthy a little bit. And then I like red onions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So while I am cooking, um, so we have some conversations conversation we're going to teach you a little bit. Is we're going to talk about how we feel about the R. Kelly verdict and just what are some of our opinions about it, um, some things that we know about it. And if we're still going to listen to his music and what we think about his music, does anybody want to start on how you how do you how do you all feel about the R. Kelly verdict? You think it was fair? You think that more should have been done? What do you think? Well, I think it's long overdue because I feel like we've been hearing about R. Kelly being her for a while, and he got off with the first instance, and the fact that he had the nerve to kind of continue it, mm -hmm. right, like he kind of maybe felt invincible, so it's like long overdue, I feel. Yeah, I agree, I agree, he's, he's had audacity um, for the minute, um, so it is nice to see that some type of justice is being served. 
Absolutely. And, I, and I'm not, a, I wasn't a huge part that can really not R. Kelly fan. Um, and not really, in, not so in terms of like listening to his music or not, that's another thing that has no effect on it. That's the substantiated it too. Well, I don't like R. Kelly. Baby, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I've never listened to my <laughs> I feel as though that, oh, again, that it's long overdue, but that when the rumors were first came about, people were still listening to his music, making the collabs, hyping them up, doing different clubs, different music with them. I'm like, but you know what's, be what's being said behind the ground. We still look at it and we're like, oh, we're going to have him on this song, we're going to have him produce this song. Like, but you don't think about the consequences of that later on. Like, oh, this. Uh, He's doing okay, shady stuff, but as long as it has the, the sales, as long as we get the sales to be a popular name, we're just going to overlook it. I'm like, that shows a problem in the industry itself, that you can overlook some things just for the money amount, basically. And how much his name is going to make you for having you on your song, having you on as producer. Instead of, you know, he might be tra traumatizing young women, but that, apparently that doesn't matter. It's not as important as the music. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think the verdict was beyond fair, but it is disappointing to know that so much of the world watched him get away with so much for so long, and you know, we're just now coming to this point. So I remember um, hearing the rumors that he married Aaliyah, and, but you never really knew if it happened. Like they, they hinted around to some things, but they never really came out with the information. Yeah. And then there was also rumors that she was pregnant. And they were trying to hide that. Um, so when I was watching the documentary, there was just so many things that you just didn't know, you know, what was happening. And but I still really, I really, I wish that he had gotten some help growing up because you know it did come out that he was also sexually assaulted, sexually molested by his sister. And I wish that he had gotten help. And I know back then it was always a hush hush, you don't say anything. Yeah. You know, families have a tendency to hide those kind of things. And then look what happened. What is his sister saying about that? No one has heard anything. Not that I know. I haven't heard anything. I thought it was a neighbor that was left at home. I heard a man. Sister. No, it was a female. It was definitely a female. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that opened the conversations to how, well, not one, how the effects of you know, childhood molestation mm -hmm. uh, affects people as they get older, but also the difference between males getting molested by females and females, you know, being molested in general. But, um, <coughs> okay. I will. Because you, you always hear about <coughs> the males, you know, taking advantage of the females. You don't really always hear about females doing it to males and it does happen. It, it or does males happen. doing it to males. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And, and, right. and this is kind of going on a bit of a tangent. So have, how many of y'all seen the Rick James documentary? I've seen it. Yeah. I didn't oh, see it. So yeah. it's, it's worth seeing. Um, oh wow. I would it's, love it's, to see on show, it's on Showtime. Yeah, okay. And so okay. as to not to give it it's all away, good. it's excellent. But as a part of it, Rick James talked about the fact that he was molested. Uh, wow. By my neighbor um, as, a, as a boy. So wow. Yeah. What's happening? I did not know that. That's something. And it happens more so than not. You okay. know? People just don't know about it. Yeah. And especially, to your point, especially when it's a boy being molested, mm -hmm. they feel like it's not a safe space to talk about it. Feel like they might get judged, like, oh, you weren't mad enough yeah. to take control of the situation. Mm -hmm. A bunch of a bunch of stigmas that stop <laughs> that conversation before they yeah. talk to you. I'm gonna have an aggressive moment. Hammer away. Hammer away. Act like it's our kitchen. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> We're pounding our killing meat, bigger. Oh, yeah. That doesn't exactly sound like that. That's all kind of dirty, don't it? That's exactly how I pictured it in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> This is cilantro. Fresh cilantro, actually. Now, all these herbs and spices smell so good. Like, like the colors and everything. I know. Yeah. So, 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 Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of, you gotta know exactly where you're gonna be. 
yeah. if you expect to actually be successful. Mm -hmm. And that's the issue, okay. trying to be successful in this area. Gotcha. What about personal chef? Actually, I did that actually on the side. Oh, okay. 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 So I ca I've catered a wedding before for 120 people. I I have um done personal chef services. Meal prep? Yeah, meal prep too. Okay. He right. does amazing meal prep. I think I ordered a couple weeks ago. I ordered a lasagna. And you had some uh, gumbo. The, um, the chicken and sausage gumbo. gumbo. Ooh, and that was so really, really good. That's we awesome. ate that like the whole, like more than a week. More than a week so we were trying to finish all the oh, food. Oh, we finished. Okay. Yeah, oh, and, we finished. The and the Italian sliders. <laughs> Okay, so here's what happened. We ate everything. Okay, so here's what happened with Italian sliders. I catered an event, and lo and behold, I went in the hole on the event because I was a vendor, so I didn't have a contract and get paid up front as most vendors get paid up front, right? I was told that they expect about 100 to 150 people. Well, about 50 showed up. And you only get paid for what you sell. Right. Okay. So if only fifty show up and you only sell a portion of that, yeah. Still, I want to hold about two hundred plus bucks. I needed to make five hundred in order to break even. I made like almost three hundred. Yeah. Wow. So I still wow. went in the hole. So that late on that night, we had a brunch and spades, mm -hmm. and we started at was it nine o'clock that night? We started at nine. And we ended at three in the morning. Wow. So I gave out what I did not sell for free to everybody who attended that night. Yeah. Okay. And so you had... Those are alternative sale plates. But, but here's the thing though, we had already announced that we were doing brunch and stage. So the whole thing was we're having brunch all throughout the night, like literally all throughout the night. Mm -hmm. So I cooked up until 11.30 that night. Wow. Mm -hmm. from Fried like, fish, yeah. eggs, grits, yes. shrimp. Uh, bacon. Bacon. Yeah. You like cooking too much? Uh, well, you know, I. So this is what happened beforehand. This is the story beforehand. <laughs> what happened was exactly what had happened was. <laughs> so what had happened was, um, we had a spades night in my house. Ian, Tracy, and a few and a, and a few others. We had like maybe eight or nine people here at the house, and me and Tracy was having a, a sidebar conversation from the part from the game that was going on. And during the sidebar conversation, Tracy was telling me about. Um, on an event they did uh, brunch and spades. I was like, okay, cool. And so what I did was, it was, was it midnight or going on midnight? Um, like one in the morning when you did the waffles. No, it was, it was before one. It was close to midnight or a little after midnight. Anyway, either way, I got in the kitchen at that moment, moment in time, I started making uh, chicken and waffles. Oh, okay. It was so good. Oh my God. <laughs> he has his, he calls them Tracy's waffles now because every time I'm here, I'm like, you make some waffles today? So, Tracy just special waffles. recipe waffles he makes, and we had lots of chicken. We had hip hop chicken, we had Popeye's chicken. So he made these waffles and put the chicken on top, and it was like everybody was just devouring. We were eating all night, but he also had the food left over from his event. So you had the um, the curry lamb, and you had the Italian sliders, and you had wings. Oh yeah. There was just all kinds of food. It was all kinds. Of yeah, so. so we do a lot of different um, events here where there's there has to be food involved. All I know is I had lunch for a whole week. <laughs> <laughs> and so he had leftover Italian sliders, and so um, I brought them home to to Cat, and she was eating those sliders for a whole week. Yeah. This is what you did full time? No, this is my side. This is just a side. It's game. passion. My passion, yeah. actually. Just check. Right, Where so you learn to cook? Self-taught completely. Yeah. So this is back 20 plus years ago. I didn't know how to cook. So I went home to North Carolina. That's where my mom from. And I asked my mom for a cookbook. Well, mama gives me the cookbook with no pictures. It was one of the old school cookbooks. So I find myself being, being in the kitchen quite a few hours trying to figure out, is this what it looks like? You know, so that was an issue. So I started to hone my skills. 
uh, this cooking and whatnot. And it got to a point where I could actually taste something and figure out what, what was in it. So if you're at home, you follow along, I've already wrapped it up and tied it off. So this is how it looks. So, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to be on a few minutes setting up and do this. Here's a set of pork loins. We're going to go in the house. Okay. For those in Cookie Land, here you go. Now I'm about to put in uh, some veggie, veggie stock into the pan so that we do not burn anything. And I'm also going to put some olive oil over top of the pork one itself. All right. Doesn't pork make their olive oil? It does, but this is lean. Okay. Now there's no fat on this really. Okay. So you would expect it to have fat, but this doesn't have fat. So it's lean. <laughs> it does I love it. Like the, <laughs> the sound effects. I love it. <laughs> so, Kat, tell us about about you. Well, I I like to say I'm from the DMV. People are like, are you from DC? Real DMV? I'm like, I say all three. Mm. Like, I was born in Silver Spring, but before I was two, we already lived in DC, and we were there for like almost eight nine years. And we moved to Virginia, there for almost eight nine years, and then back to Maryland. So, like, I kind of equally live in all three places. I like I can't choose one over the other, one culture over the other. I've lived in the suburbs of Virginia. I've lived in downtown DC. I live in the country of Maryland. So I try to say I engross almost all the different <coughs> niches of cultures all together. And I stayed here until I went to college in Norfolk at Norfolk State University, so Silk Bay. And then from there, I actually was able to study abroad in Thailand for seven months oh, awesome. and do international relations in Bangkok, which was an wow. eye-opening experience nice. and definitely awesome. a, a big culture shock. I would think more so for me and also for people there as well, because I, I went to a um, temple and they, they had like monk students there, so we got to interact and they're like, I had a big afro back in the day. They're like, how is your hair not touching your shoulders? What is your skincare routine? <laughs> Do you tan as often? I was like, no, I was just born like this. <laughs> and then I ended up moving back home and I was like, you know what? There's so many more. The opportunities I got here were so great. So I ended up moving back, joining the education field as an admin assistant and as an I say part sped teacher, part counselor. I'd be I go in, in between different classrooms and help out where help is needed in different schools and that has just been amazing so far. So it's education you feel? Yes. In December I actually graduate with my degree of behavioral and social sciences. Congratulations. Yes, let's hurry up with that. <laughs> She's my partner of homework, so it's oh, a lot. <laughs> and so some of my friends say, is, is Kat going to grad school? You mean, are we going to grad school? <laughs> is this going to be a group effort, we? Because she won't do her homework unless I'm there. And I'm like, oh, I don't want any more degrees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's continued education. You always learn. It's mm -hmm. continued mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm good. I want you to continue. <laughs> what about you, Chef? I have a BS degree in psychology and I got an MBA with a concentration in project management and information security. Okay. So I've done uh, IT work for the 22 years. 12 of those 20 years was a DIA, this intelligence agency. So I uh, did a lot of stuff at DIA, um, like classified, majority of classified. Um, so I was one, I'm one of those people that's got a TS clearance and all that other good stuff that a lot of other people do in the, in the DMV area. Mm -hmm. So, um, I also have three tours of duty under my belt. Uh, two in Afghanistan, one in Iraq. Mm -hmm. So, um, when I was in Iraq, I was chief of Domex operations in Mosul. Domex stands for Document Media Exploitation. So basically, when special forces knock somebody's door down, they, for, they roll up some, somebody who's nefarious or whatever, they would bring it to my guys and we would, um, if it was a cell phone, a SIM card, if it was a laptop, a hard drive, whatever it was, we would exploit it. They get the raw intelligence off of it, 
Then afterwards, we would turn it into the analyst. By about, if you look at wartime efforts, about information like that is going to be good for 96 hours before they start changing how they're going to do business. And we found a whole bunch of stuff, uh, intelligence-wise, you know, from the stuff we exploited. So we gave it to the analysts. We even broke up a, a sex trafficking ring on the base. Wow. Yeah. A lot of brothers have heard about that one. The, I killed Well, <laughs> well, believe it or not, it was ran out, out of a pizza shop. Wow. And the code word was anchovies. Oh, wow. What was this? This was, this was in Iraq back in 2012. No, 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 2010, I'm sorry, 2010. Wow. And someone actually called for for anchovies. That's what, that's what really did it. Oh, because oh, they really wanted anchovies. They really wanted anchovies. anchovies. And somebody shows oh, up. Got it. Offering oh, services. No. Oh. I'm waiting for the punchline. That was the punchline. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So that's as a result, you know, somebody brings a cell phone with that number in it to my guys for to exploit. Yeah. And then we was like, oh. Damn, we need to get us to base to the you know to people on base. And, uh, so, sex trafficking ring got broken up. You know, unsung heroes. Were Yo. they military or were they? Hmm. Are you living in the same? Yeah, that's classified. Okay. Hmm. It doesn't say a lot of people went home because of that. All right. So, and then when I was like uh, Afghanistan, I was in charge of one of the networks countrywide. I had people, from, I managed throughout the entire country, about 70, 80 people, military, government, and contractor. I was manager. Then I went back in 2018, overseas to Afghanistan again, and I was chief of country for all Domex operations <coughs> again. But this time I was doing Mosul. I mean, I was doing this one was fight. I was doing all of all Afghanistan for all Domex operations. So I was reporting to the four star general, I was reporting to the base commander, and I was reporting to the, our senior executive on the ground. So I had like, four or five bosses, yeah. you know. So whenever something came down and it was hot and heavy, I told my guys, we're not going home tonight, you know. Sound about right. Yeah. What do you think about what has occurred uh, in Afghanistan? Well, one, actually I have homework over the weekend. My supervisor gave me, he told me <laughs> that uh, <coughs> Vaca Boy, uh -huh. is that a thing? Is it real? Is it true? You know it. Either friend or not. <laughs> what do you mean? You can look on the internet, but there's it's so much conflicting information. But is that a thing? Because of my clearance and the things I've been exposed to, when I, they like okay, I give you a good example. Edward Snowden, he gave away classified information to a lot of people, right? That's the wiki guy, right? No, he he um. He well, did, yes, he was. He did some things on <coughs> wiki, yes, but it was bigger than just that. Uh -huh. So I'm getting to the point, the long way around. We were told by the senior executives at DIA, just because this guy exposed information that was classified of NSA and other agencies and whatnot, we are not allowed, even if we read the book or watch, watch the movie, terms and code words were mentioned in the movie and in the book. So we were not allowed to read the book one or if you read the book, not allowed to talk about it. Or Google it. There you go. Because... Just because it's on the internet, don't make it... Don't it don't make it right. Yeah. So <laughs> that's the reason why I say, yeah. just because you have a clearance and you know about it and maybe unclassified, as well as officially declassified, you can't talk about it. Yeah. Because you will lose your clearance. Yeah. All right. So which question did you just answer? The question None of them. He was all like the <laughs> all He of said he don't answer none of your right. questions. <laughs> So what are we making next, Jeff? <laughs> 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 it's a nice segue, I know. Some spinach. <laughs> so, uh, one of your questions, uh, well, indirectly, my rank uh, from the trailer to uh, military rank when I was overseas, I was equivalent to a lieutenant colonel when I was overseas. But because I worked for DIA and whatnot, I had a lot more authority than a lot of other people did because of who I knew and the position I had. So when you're a chief of something, right? Mm -hmm. That means you only report to only a few different few people. So I was reporting to a senior executive, I was reporting to a four star and you know some other people. You know, and uh, I was one, one of the lucky few to actually serve my country properly. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, 
So right now, I'm doing a veggie appetizer. <laughs> it has curry in it. <laughs> nice little segue. <laughs> so this has uh, curry in it. It has, um, I'm doing this actually backwards actually, because I should have burned the curry first. So. Uh, you know, it's it's gonna be tasty. I'm gonna tell you how I know it's tasty. I used to have a dog once upon a time. Once upon a time, and he was sitting right here giving me the the the, the, the puppy dog look. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him. And I said, "You're not gonna like this. It has no it has no meat in it." I'm still giving the puppy dog look. And so he still gave it to me. And I was like, "Okay, fine. You're not gonna like this." I gave it to him before I could get my plate done. That joke had already finished his plate. Look at me like I want more. <laughs> I was like, "Wow." I was like, "Okay, well, if you like it, maybe it is good." So I was like, "Oh, this is pretty tasty." Keep in mind, dogs like everything. Uh, not him. I no, say oh, not him. I wasn't gonna say that. Right. Not, no, 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 no. This dog was discriminating. This dog was very discriminating. No, I hadn't messed with him. I had to. <laughs> no way. See that you go. Know. My dog is very discriminating. She'll spit stuff out. Chloe, mm -hmm. our dog Chloe, yeah, want waffles? Oh, we have two yeah. dogs, Chloe and Waffles. Now Waffles will eat anything. What? No, he will eat He will eat anything except for his food. Yes. Oh. So, so, he doesn't want his dog. Oh. So this is what I did not tell you earlier. I'm making a reduction sauce, pork loin, and this is going to be fresh raspberries, mix with some fresh pineapple. Mm. And I'm going to mix it with some agave, some honey, and some liquor. Is it like a custard? Is it a sauce? Sauce. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So we're going to boil this down. So I already put in a cup of water to it. So those are our raspberries. Next up we're going to put in the uh, pineapple. They always say pork goes along with, um, with fruit. So, so we're gonna get it on high. We're gonna cook this down. Next up, got some light agave, and I have acacia honey. You gotta be careful. Well, tell us about that. What's the difference between that and a normal honey? It's supposed to have properties, you know, in medicinal and okay. amongst some other things. And it came, comes from Germany. Um, so oh, you, can, okay. you can get it from Lido or you can get it from um, all of these. Okay. Okay. It's a different type of honey. And here is light agave. Oh. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is a tablespoon. This is, about, this is about two tablespoons right here. Okay, those at home, one tablespoon two and two tablespoons. Two cups. Thank you for asking. Your definition of light. Is no, okay. Right. You know, you don't black folks don't matter. All right. So we're also gonna put some all-in-one seasoning in it as well. A couple of shakes. A couple of shakes. Oh, so. Body yet. Yeah. Okay, it's all in one season. Yeah. So we have that going. I need to stir that up. Finishes um, boiling. I'm going to strain it out into another bowl where we just get the, the sauce pure. Okay, and I'm also going to add in the liquor, so it's going to be brandy actually. Yeah. 
It's a half a cup. It's about half a cup. Yeah. And you just hear a s. I see it's apricot flavor, brandy. Yep, apricot. Here you go. For those at home, this is apricot flavored brandy. Bring me back to the, the grandpa. Has your mom been watching your cooking show? Possibly. Um, I know my middle brother, Joseph. Joseph ran for sad. So, hey Joe. what Joe likes to do is take my recipes and he reverse engineers my recipes. Okay, he's like, I gotta make it for me. I was like, nothing wrong with it to begin with. So he's like, I gotta make it for me. I'm like, okay, no problem. So I end up, well, he ends up taking my recipes that I post or he and me talk about and he makes it and he reverse engineers it to be what he wants it to be. Sometimes I've never, let's see, hold on. He took my salmon and made it better. I was like, okay, cool. He was taking several of my recipes and made it better. I was like, okay. So, I'm not hating. Yeah. Maybe a little bit. That much. It's all in the family, though. It's all in the family. <laughs> a little bit. During family gatherings, do you find that you're mainly the chef? Or does everybody kind of contribute? So, here's what happened. What had happened what was... Had <laughs> <laughs> um, my mom used to be the person doing all the cooking. And then um, one one thing is good, my mom was really, really mad at me. I told her to sit down, so I'm cooking. And then she was really mad. And then, next simple Thanksgiving, I went from cooking like 10%, 50%, 60, 70, 80%. Yeah. Mom just doing the, the, the desserts at this point. <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I did ask for it. Didn't know I asked for it, but no, I asked for it. I was trying to give mom a break from cooking. You know, all of a sudden, no, mom and dad like, no, nah, you got it, buddy. <laughs> it's on you. So I did, I've been doing smoked turkeys. I've been doing smoked prime rib, uh, smoked venison, um, the mac and cheese, the green beans, the garlic mashed potatoes, um, and a bunch of other stuff, you know, I would do. Oh, even sweet potato pies, you know. And I'll show my mom how to make it. It's like a variety of events in terms of the who wants to get together to ride bikes, right? Or who wants to go check out this, um, go to Ozio or yeah. something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's Ozio. It's, it's, it's a, it's a rough stop. I think a cigar bar. Cigar bar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is kind of flavorful. That's my beans. Yeah. Mm hmm. Really good. Good. Mm -hmm. Coming from a very picky eater as myself. Oh, you picky? Mm -hmm. Yes. I like. I, I wish I wasn't. I but everyone too. around me can be like, Ugh, "Are you actually gonna eat this? I'm gonna eat this." That's mm -hmm. a good veggie dish. It, it is. is very nice. Yeah. It's something that's not heavy. It's light. You know, it'll mm -hmm. tide you over until you get to your main entree, you know. Mm -hmm. What made you decide on this collaboration of different veggies? Um, I've been trying to eat healthier. So since I'm trying to eat healthier, uh, I was messing around in the kitchen one day and the, and the dog was like, you know. Where's the dog at? He's, in the, he's on the wall one of the pictures, but um, he, uh, he's not here. Okay. Hey, girlfriend, take a reclaim it. I just noticed that I was just increasing so many things that I did over time. I'm like, because I've been home, I'm like, I can have this, I can do this. I don't have to like worry about going out to the store for like my 30 minute break. Like, my break is at home, I could just go straight to the refrigerator. And so, once I kind of got that moment, like, okay, maybe this isn't the best thing, I started like changing for the better, which has been mac and cheese chef what you doing all right i'm turning that off mac and cheese here's how i'm gonna build a mac and cheese prior to everyone getting here i uh went ahead and bought all the noodles from the mac and cheese so i'm putting a layer of the body hair seasoning on it some people do um black pepper or whatever me i prefer to give it just a little bit more soul so it's gonna have that on it next thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put in i'm gonna do this in layers 
So it's going to be seasoning, noodles, butter, and then um, put in the other stuff to it. So this is unsalted butter. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for those who have issues with at home, like um, I don't know, diabetes or, or high blood pressure, whatever, right? We can use unsalted butter, you know, to do this, and it won't kill you because there's enough cheese and everything else in it to get you. So we're gonna put just pieces of um, the butter all throughout. Next up is the cheese. So you see, I have um, some cheddar cheese. Okay. Yes, sir. Oh, we're gonna make we're gonna make this same. <laughs> All right. So, chef, some people like to make a sauce. Why do you choose not to? For this? For mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. Um, because the way I do it, it's already ooey and gooey. Okay. <laughs> All right, ooey and gooey. And I did this for my frat. Um, and when I did it, there was absolutely no one talking. Mm -hmm. Everybody was eating. Milk. Yep. So I have three cans. The reason is mine is a little bit different. You won't see in a little bit. But while this is in the oven, I take it out of the oven halfway through, and I put another can of my bread milk in it because you know it dries up in the oven, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the cheese melts. Yeah. But how do you keep it from getting just ridiculous, yeah. right? Because yeah, yeah. you know, you know it's like stuff is sticking to the sides. Yeah. Like how the hell am I going to keep this from sticking to the sides and everything yeah. else, right? Yeah, yeah. Three cans of this. Okay. How much does a can like that mean? Like two pizza? Like the, the entire bin? Um. Thank <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>, you. <laughs> Wait, that's why this girl got you on the <laughs> You know what? You got me, you got me. <laughs> Like to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> People at home like they foolish. They foolish. Okay. So you see, this is how I do my mac and cheese. How many um, boxes of noodles? This was actually one box. Okay. Okay. Thanksgiving so early. I know. <laughs> All right. So let's spread this out. Nice and even. And you know, some noodles are already be still hot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, more butter. And then I perfected it. I figured out my kinks that I was able to make Thanksgiving and there was no more left. Was good. Okay. I was she like, you know, it was good when there's no, like, I was like, oh, where's the pan? It's already in the track. There's nothing. I was like, okay. <laughs> Cat was always that kid. She really don't want you to tell her how to do it. She kind of just wants to figure it out. Is that the fork? Yeah, I'm gonna get that in a second. Oh. I just wanna make sure I get this. Cause I'm gonna just go back. All of it. All of it. Yeah, but that you know, too. That's gonna have bite size. Okay. Yeah. When you think of cheese, what do you think of? Cheese. Cheese, right? Yeah. Yeah. You wanna make sure that. Who cares about the back, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Back with your cheese, right? Yes. All right, so here we go. You like epitome of comfort food. What are your favorite? What if you could pick one comfort food that's your favorite? What would it be? Mm. Mm. Probably mac and cheese. For me. Yeah. Same. Probably is mac. And mac and cheese just makes you happy. It does. You know, just yeah. no matter what it's with, it could be mac and cheese and chicken. It could be yeah. mac and cheese and fried fish. I think you can mac and cheese and mac and cheese. Yeah. 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 You just have a bowl of mac and cheese and like that's it. Yeah. It just makes you happy. And even a nice grilled cheese sandwich and you dip it in tomato soup. Yeah. yeah. This one. I say my comfort food is breakfast. I love a can egg and cheese croissant. I can have it any type of day. I can have it in the middle of the night. It is my absolute favorite. Uh, my Oh, I can't even see. So like grow fed 
fish like grilled on the grill. You had it fresh because you're yeah. right there in the ocean. So yeah, that's yeah, amazing. yeah. Like we had our, one of our neighbors fish, so we had chicken, so we would get the eggs mm -hmm. and fish. Awesome. What's life like in Trinidad? Like, 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 I don't know. I've never been to St. Croix. I've been to you. Yeah, it's hot. So. I mean, like between probably the 80s or 90s, 90s in the summer, mm -hmm. 80s, at most, the pools would be 70s. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, pretty nice. Like, you just find, I spend a lot of time weekends on the beach. So, and it was weird when I moved stateside and people would say, we're going to the beach. And I'm like, that's not a real beach. Mm -hmm. Like, Ocean City and Virginia Beach and like, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. so, we're going to do crab, fry crab balls next. Anybody want one of these? They look a little lonely. Okay. Okay. Alright, so we're going to do fry crab balls next. Okay. So we're going to make a crab ball. Okay. Oh, the eggs are the batter for dipping. Yeah. Yep, and then we're going to put in the, put it in the crab balls. Okay. And then we're going to do it twice the bread crumbs. Okay. Because okay. it's going to be deep fried. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Of course it will be. Right, Why so not? Mm -hmm. Now, some egg. You must have a lot of friends. Where are you? Huh? Where are you? Deep fryer. I mean, no, yeah. I'm just saying no. Like, if I had a close friend that was a chef, as, you know, one of my good friends here can tell you, whenever she cooks <laughs> and she lets me know she's cooking, I'm always there. <laughs> so, if I had a friend that was a chef, I would be with her all the time. <laughs> like, <laughs> Alright, so, so oh, yeah. here's a crab bowl. Okay, it's already been dipped twice. Yep. Alright. For those in Foodie Land, here's a crab bowl. Marty dipped it twice. You put that in the bowl right there. Oh, yeah, made an egg wash. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. For Foodie Land, here's an egg wash right here. So, you put it in the egg wash first. Then it goes to the breadcrumbs next. Afterwards, it goes back into the egg wash again, and then a yeah. second time into the breadcrumbs. We make sure that we get a nice, good coating. Because in deep fries, I want I want to be crispy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have the timer set for the lamb. When the lamb comes, I mean not lamb. <laughs> when the pork loin comes out, that and cheese goes in. Got it. And I've already put in the. Uh, oh, the crab. Oh. Yes, the crab balls already. I do. <laughs> so for those at home, for those at home in Foodie Land, here are the uh, the crab balls. salad and I'm going to take the uh, pork loin out shortly and I'm going to brown it So I want to get to that pork loin. But for those out in Fugue Land, I've already done the pork loins already. So guess what? Here's how it actually looks in the finished product. Okay? Sauce on it too. Uh, so that sauce is already finished. So we need to strain the sauce out. And we need to put the rest of the sauce over top of this. The way we do the Caesar salad is we're going to layer it up. Okay? So put your first layer of lettuce in here. Okay? The romaine lettuce. Next up, we're going to put our seasoning on the top of it. So really what's going to be is some black pepper and a couple other things. So I like the, the good black pepper. Peppercorn, mm -hmm. you can grind it in. So there was a, um, a party I catered over the summer. And I did this recipe for the, uh, the seafood salad. And the seafood salad is one of the first things to go at the party. It just went. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. At that party, I did jerk wings. <clears throat> I did some Caribbean wings. When I mean Caribbean wings, I put rum in the barbecue sauce. And it had jerk seasoning underneath, so I cooked the jerk seasoning already on it, on the grill, and it smoked. Then I added in a barbecue sauce with some Puerto Rican rum in it. Right. And that rum was 40% proof. Wow. Nice. So I put that rum into the barbecue sauce, and I put it in the oven for about 30 minutes uncovered. So the barbecue sauce and the liquids are just gelled together. Okay. At the party, I walked around. I caught somebody like this. <laughs> Fingers, not the whole hand was in the mouth. I was like, okay. Did my job. <laughs> Here's my seat. So we layer it up. I don't want that to go. So we're going to put in some uh, triple cheese. Okay. Sprinkle it all around. Then we already have the pepper we put in. So next up, we put in the apple cheese. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yep. Yeah. And then I put in another Parmesan cheese. It's a dash, but for those at home in Foodie Land, it's a more than a dash. It's probably about um, a, couple, a couple tablespoons, actually. Look, my family makes it look complicated. 
this is a nice cream mac and cheese. And you saw how much cheese it went in, right? <laughs> now guess what? We're not done. Oh, I Boyfriend is the reason I'm here. <laughs> I kind of go to deny that statement. All right, so how are we looking with that so far, right? The fact that I can share you I'm trying to do what I can. Anybody else want to tell you? Yes. <laughs> we were just waiting patiently. I knew that was coming. We were just waiting patiently. Just waiting for the signal. All right, the signal. On the back signal went up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, that's mm. not right. Chef Nick, cooking conversation. Have a good night.